Welcome everyone to our channel class. And it's going to last about an hour and a half. We have three participants playing various pieces and uh, let them introduce themselves in the pieces. Hello, I'm Luis Tobar and I'll be playing uh, the first one of the D major so. Thank you. 
very empirical, which is not, doesn't happen that often. Usually they're contrasting. Nevertheless, they represent the different characters and different lyrical characters in different registers. So in opera, it would be uh, different voices, all right? The second thing, which is, I, I find really fascinating in, in Haydn's music, is how unbelievably mercurial is, is, is the material itself. The, within the eight-bar phrase, uh, Haydn goes to really such a huge amount of different directions character-wise, from lyrical singing uh, to uh, portraying operatic laughter right in the second part, right? Then he goes to, to uh, certain playfulness, almost operatic flirtations, right? And many, many other things within just the gesture of first uh, eight bar phrase, the statement of the main theme. And I think when we focus our attention on these things and work on them, we will forget how difficult it is. And it will become just a pure pleasure to share what you think and feel about the piece. Yeah? So let's start from the beginning. And uh, if we think of her, like this is a little opera for cello is the main role. Uh, who is the first character you play? What kind of voice is that? A soprano. Soprano, maybe. It's, it's a... Uh, can be. Or it can be also a high tenor. Yeah? And now I'm going to say something terrible. But I really want you to start loving your voice the same way singers love their voices. Almost to the degree that you love it like too much. So I would like you to uh, experience incredible depth and beauty of your voice there, right away. First thing first, you need to breathe and you don't. Yeah? Let's take a deep breath together. And, uh,
in, in joyful, uh, tender teenager, right? But it's a different expression, right? So this is a statement, right? This is a laughter. Now this one is asking for something, it's not stating anymore. And I think we can uh, make the phrase a little bit more flexible in that regard. Thus we 
might find it's a little bit easier if you just for that sake incriminate a little more. One more time on the key.
said no. Do it press it. Let it stay on the screen if you want. Or you can detach whatever you prefer. But do this. Because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. 
to touch is there's lots of double stops here, right? And I think they have a tendency to be just double stops, okay? But in the nature of it, it's two voices singing together, not one cellist going from one difficulty to another, right? And what I think we can, you, how we can eat your life eventually is, first of all, remind yourself how the other, if there is, for instance, since this six is in the beginning, you know, you know, you know, you know, which voices do you think? Hmm? We're saying the bottom voice. Can you play? Just the bottom voice. And then you go. <laughs> 
but it's already a very good starting point where to really uh, bring this descending passage uh, to where you think it's supposed to be. All right? Now, uh, can you play from here?
learned, played it once, I think two years ago, and then started relearning it about a month and a half ago. Uh -huh. You played that one once too? No, not the first time, but now I'm learning the other time. Look, you did wonderful things, but uh, I think you can really stretch the boundaries of the cello playing by trying to portray something even more elaborate, expressive. Because this is, I mean, I'm going to say a bunch of cliches about Spanish music, but you know, the essence of it is, 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 is passion. Right, and all degrees of it, and, and, and passion, and really deep, deep human feelings. Uh, also, we have to, I think, to think a little more of what, what kind of influences this music might have, even from the cultural and historical perspective. So when you look at the, I don't know, the, the architecture, in Spain, right? You can find all sorts of interesting things coming from, well, even from 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 the uh, Arab culture, because there was a lot of a lot of uh, interesting historical, uh, you know, the <coughs> influences, not just movers. <laughs> right? And I think what kind of brought into that language, uh, musical language from that side, is this imagine something very ornate sometimes. It's like, like, I don't know, Alhambra perhaps. Or um, think about something so expressive and so diverse in, 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 in fashion that is flamenco dance. And I think all of that is here. And we can find it and in, 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 in look for it in our sounds, in the in, in expressivity of our gestures. Yeah? But again, if you look at the this highly ornate, let's say, architectural styles, and I'm sorry for going so many analogies with at first glance and other things, but I think they're interconnected, is that no matter how ornate the structure is, would it be architectural structure or musical structure? If it's a really good structure, it has very strong goals. Yeah? And I think these things are missing. So for instance, when you are uh, playing something so elaborate or innate, as all of this Flamenco guitar long runs are ornaments. And I don't perceive them as ornaments because you play the theme on the top and the ornament with the same kind of expression of voice. Or even in the beginning when you put um ya ba di ba di ba da ba team ya di ya ba ba. This is a company. This is a guitar roll of some kind or whatever it is, I don't know. But it's, it's, a, it's a complementary guitar role. And what's happening, your roles are often guitar roles uh, because they're technically challenging in the cello. They are played in such a way that they, they destroy the melody at the top. Right? So when you play... I keep forgetting the One, two, 
too, right? And I'd like to hear that. By the way, uh, there's crescendo here, which I think
as soon as possible. And it sounds a little... A couple... 
same here. Yeah? And the last thing is Thank you. 